and welcome to the next lecture in electrical machines in this lecture we will focus our discussion on single phase induction motors let us see the contents first so the lecture series will be divided into certain parts where the first part we will be concentrating on the introduction to single phase motors their construction qualitative examination of single phase induction motors so what are the different types of single phase motors and single phase induction motors are one of the category of single phase motors and its construction and qualitative examination we are going to do in this particular lecture which is the first part of the lecture series second part we will focus on the principle of principle of operation of single phase induction motors using the principle of double revolving field theory which is the second part the third part we will discuss how the torque is produced in single phase induction motors and what is its physical significance and the problems which are associated with the torque the types of single phase induction motors will be discussed in the fourth part of this lecture series where we will discuss the different types of induction motors specifically the split phase induction motor and the capacitor run induction motors finally the fifth part we are going to discuss the equivalent circuit of single phase induction motor and then one of the tutorial problems we will be discussing the different problems and solutions uh, regarding this single phase motors let us start with the introduction so single phase motors has the name suggest it will be operating using the single phase supply we know and have studied the three phase motors three phase induction motor required three phase supply whereas the single phase motor will require the single phase supply it is the most commonly used electric motors in the domestic and industrial applications so when we talk about the domestic applications and industrial applications generally we use the single phase motors the reason is that single phase supply is usually available at the domestic as well as industrial areas the small size motors are known as the fractional kilowatt rate in are the single phase motors so these single phase motors are basically the fractional kilowatt rate in motors and they are very small in size so it will be miniature type of size and the size are of different uh, dimensions so the fractional kilowatt rate in motors are generally it is called upon the domestic application if we focus then the motors are basically used in fans the hair dryers the washing machines vacuum cleaners the mixers refrigerators and the food processors so these domestic applications day to day we use it and these type of applications required single phase motors whereas in the industries if we talk then it is the compressors pumps small power tools office machineries blowers small farming equipments these are some of the examples of single phase motors that are used in industries there are many different types of motors which is not mentioned here but that are being used in industries as well motor manufacturing industries develop different types of motors de designs to meet the user needs so day to day in life the users need different motors for their application and hence these manufacturing industries generally manufacture the single phase motors keeping in mind the need of the user so when we talk about the classification of single phase motors they are classified based on the construction and the method by which these single phase motors are started so the classification of single phase motors are broadly into three main types are known first the induction motors so single phase motor will be one type we have the induction motors second we'll have the synchronous motors and third we have the commutator motors so the single phase motors are generally available in three different broad categories however there are many other type of motors that fall in the category of single phase motors like for example if we talk about the induction motors for single phase it will be having like the split phase the standard pole the reluctant start type and again the reluctant start type can be a reluctance motor 
or it can be the hysteresis motor. Whereas, if we talk about the, uh, sorry, the, for the synchronous motor, you can have the reluctance motor and the hysteresis motor. And the induction motors are of these three categories, which we will focus our discussion generally in this lecture series, because our lecture series will be based on induction motors. Later, we will take about the synchronous motors, where we will talk about the reluctance motor and the hysteresis motor. When we talk about the commutator motors, there are again many categories like we have the repulsion motors, repulsion induction motors, AC series motors and universal motors. So these universal motors are used in lot of applications because of its very high speed. So the toys that the children plays, they are also we use the universal motors. So we will focus our discussion on single phase induction motors and its various types and in the coming lectures, we will focus on other types of single phase motors. So single phase induction motors are very similar to the three phase induction motors that we have discussed, except some of the phenomena is that the stator is provided with single phase winding. Uh, we have studied that in three phase induction motors, the stator will be provided with three phase winding, whereas in stator of single phase induction motor, it is provided with single phase winding. You will also need some auxiliary or starting winding for starting purpose. So single phase induction motors are not self-starter and three phase induction motors are self-starting motors. Hence, we need some extra winding which is known as the auxiliary winding or the starting winding. And the starter uh, stator windings are basically distributed type and we have the screw cage rotor. So screw cage rotor we have already uh, studied in very detail in the three phase induction motors. And here also the rotor will be of screw cage type. Whereas the stator winding, if we talk about, it will not be concentrated one, rather it will be distributed one. So when we give the single phase supply to the single phase induction motor in the stator winding, the flux will be producing, which will be alternating in nature, and it will alternate along one space axis only. So you know that in three phase induction motors, a rotating magnetic field is produced and as a result the induction motors of three phase types are basically self-started motors but in single phase uh, induction motors whatever the flux is produced that is alternating in nature is not rotating and it is alternating in only one space so how this induction motor operates and how it starts that is the main lookout in single phase induction motors so here, uh, the rotating flux is not synchronously as developed by two or three phase uh, motors, uh, what we have. So we have already discussed like uh, when you have a three phase supply or the two phase supply, you can have the rotating magnetic field or the flux. But in single phase, it is not possible because the alternating flux, although it will produce, but it will be rotating in only one space axis. So rotating magnetic field is not produced in three single phase induction motors. The alternating flux cannot rotate a stationary squirrel cage rotor that is only possible with rotating flux. So the rotor is basically standstill and these flux which is produced alternating it cannot rotate the stationary rotor for which you require a rotating magnetic field. And hence we can say that the single phase induction motors are not self-starting. So we don't have uh, the properties of self-starting as we have in three-phase induction motors. So single-phase induction motors are not self-starting. Now, if it is not self-starting, then how we can start the rotor? So initially, the rotor is rotated by hand or by using a small motor in either direction and torque we produce and accelerate to its final speed. So the rotor is basically rotated either by hand by the mechanical um, torque which is produced by the hand or you can have a small pony motors which is again the induction motor only and it is rotating it can be rotated in any either direction it is not necessary that you have to rotate either in clockwise or anti-clockwise you can rotate in any either direction and hence the rotor will produce the torque and it will accelerate to its final speed so this uh, we are going to see in more detail like what actually happened in the induction motors and how it is basically started. So possibly only when the applied torque is not too high. So we can do this operation when 
the required torque is less and it is not too high then only we can use such type of applications where the torque is very high then we can prefer the three phase induction motors let us see the construction and do some qualitative examinations so the laminated iron core with two windings are arranged perpendicularly so when we talk about the construction we require a core and this core has to be laminated iron and you will be having two different windings which will be arranged per perpendicularly so you will have the windings on the y axis and the x axis which are arranged perpendicularly in the construction so these windings are basically known as the main winding and the auxiliary winding so we have already discussed that auxiliary winding are the starting winding which is required in single phase induction motors so the stator winding is basically distributed in the slots for a sinusoidal mmf produced in the space so again uh, i'm repeating that the stator winding is not concentrated it is basically distributed in the slots which are provided in the stator and these will produce the alternating flux so here in uh, circuit diagram we can see that the voltage that is being given is a single phase voltage and the rotor that is used is basically a screw cage rotor which is common to three phase induction motors where also we use screw cage rotor and we can see that the stator winding are basically distributed in the slots of the stator and here here we can see the main physical uh, main stator winding how it looks like so here we have the different slots where the windings are present and this core will be laminated where the flux will be produced in the air gap the motor housing is there and the windings are there so these windings are basically distributed in the various slots it is not concentrated one so single phase winding generates equal forward and backward rotating mmf waves so when you start the single phase motors using either the hand or any small motor you will see that under the stationary operation then will be forward and backward mmf which is produced and this mmf will be equal now due to the symmetry the motor exhibits no starting torque so no starting torque is there because the motor is symmetry and at standstill it produces equal torque in both the direction so whatever the torque is produced in the forward direction equal torque is produced in the reverse direction and both cancel due to the symmetry and hence you will not have any starting torque so you required auxiliary winding which will resolve this problem creating a net torque in the intended direction for the motor initiation and sustain operation so at the very beginning uh, when the motor is stationary you required auxiliary winding which will be solving the problem of not self starting and will get some torque at the starting and when a sufficient speed will be gathered you will be having the sustained operation so here in the figure we can see there is a main main winding and there is a starting winding the starting winding is the auxiliary winding which is required during the starting purpose where to gather the motor certain torque and then you will have the sustain operation where the starting winding will be taken out and only the main winding will be in function so we will see what type of starting windings are there and how the construction uh, governs for the single phase motors so single phase motors we can talk about the true two phase machines generally we have the single phase machine and three phase machine but when you can you can think that although it is a single phase motors it is basically operating as a two phase machine because you have the main winding and the auxiliary winding and both are producing its own flux and hence we have two phase machines because two mmfs are produced so screw cage rotor which has a laminated iron core and you will have a slot in that which is the construction side and this is the screw cage rotor we have already seen in the three phase induction motors you will be having the aluminium bars which will be tilted and this will act as the winding so aluminium bars are basically molded on the slots which are pros present in the stator and short circuited at both ends with a ring so you cannot add any external resistance as we have discussed in three phase induction motors where you have the school cage and slip ring induction motor if you remember in slip ring induction motor we can add external resistance but in school cage it is not possible to add 
any external resistance because the aluminium bars are basically molded on the slots and it is basically short circuited at the end rings. So this completes the basic introduction of single phase motors with a focus on single phase induction motors and in the next lecture we will go in more details as per our lecture plan. Thank you for now. See you in the next lecture.